Are you looking for the best mirrorless cameras? In this video we will look at some of the best mirrorless cameras on the market. Before we get started with our video, we have included links in the description. So make sure you check those out to see which one is in your budget range. Number 1. Fujifilm XS10. While it's on the pricier side for a beginner camera, the Fujifilm XS10 is one of the best entry-level mirrorless cameras on the market, with plenty to offer for beginners and more advanced users alike. It's a blast to shoot with, with film simulation profiles that make it easy to play around with the look of your photos without having to do any post-processing, and feels great in the hand to boot. Plus, it's one of the few cameras at this price point to offer in-body image stabilization, which comes in clutch when shooting at slower shutter speeds or recording handheld videos. The Nikon Z50 is another great choice if you want to save a bit, since it comes bundled with a pretty decent kit lens for the same price as the XS10 camera body alone. It even has a weather-sealed body but doesn't have an IBIS system. Ultimately, you can't go wrong with either of these cameras, but the Fujifilm offers a ton of bang for your buck. Number 2. Sony Alpha 6400. If the Fujifilm XS10 is out of your price range, a Sony APS-C Alpha camera like the Sony Alpha 6400 represents a good middle ground for price and performance. It's showing its age now, with an outdated menu system and ergonomics that leave a little something to be desired. However, its sensor can capture excellent quality images, and the camera's autofocus system remains one of the best in its class, even today. For those who want to save even more money, the Sony Alpha 6100 uses the same sensor but has a lower resolution EVF and a slightly cheaper build. On the flip side, if you like the autofocus and lenses that Sony has, the pricier Sony Alpha 6600 also takes that same sensor but puts it in a sturdier body with a bigger battery and in-body image stabilization. Overall, the differences between these three cameras are minor, so each one can be a good choice, depending on your budget. Number 3. Canon EOS R50. Those on a tighter budget will love the Canon EOS R50. It's one of the best value mirrorless cameras on the market right now. It has a solid sensor that captures great image quality, 4K video recording at up to 30 frames per second, and a portable body that'll make you want to bring it wherever you go. It's also incredibly accessible for those who've only ever used smartphone cameras since it has a robust auto mode that takes much of the guesswork out of photography. The Olympus OMD EM10 Mark IV is another great budget camera, and it's part of the Micro Four Thirds system, so the lenses will be more compact. It also includes IBIS, which is almost unheard of among budget cameras. However, its autofocus system isn't nearly as reliable as the AF on the Canon. Compact, lightweight RF mount camera with a 24.2 megapixel CMOS, APS-C sensor and Digic X processor. 4K uncropped movie with dual pixel CMOS AF2 at up to 30 frames per second oversampled from 6K and full HD high frame rate movie at up to 120 frames per second. Movie for close up demo mode quickly switches focus when a product is brought close to the camera. Dual pixel CMOS AF2 covering up to 100% x 100% area with 651 AF zones with auto subject detection and tracking of people, animals, and vehicles using deep learning technology. Continuous shooting with 12 frames per second with electronic first curtain and 15 frames per second with electronic shutter. Take great shots even in difficult settings with Advanced A Plus Assist which offers an expanded array of auto-compatible scenes enabling greater expressive capability in auto mode, and built-in flash for shooting in dark environments or with backlit scenes. Number 4. Sony ZV-E10. If you want to get started in video, look no further than the Sony ZV-E10. This budget vlogging camera is the perfect video camera for beginners. It's similar to Sony Alpha cameras like the Sony Alpha 6100 mentioned above, but is geared more toward vloggers and video shooters. For one, it has an updated internal microphone, a detachable windscreen to reduce ambient noise, and a fully articulated screen that makes it easy to monitor yourself while recording. Unfortunately, you don't get a viewfinder here, but the camera is super portable and feels relatively well built. 
Battery life is also impressive for a mirrorless camera. Plus, its autofocus system is reliable and accurate, and it even has specialized focus modes, like Product Showcase, which is great for product and beauty vloggers, as it automatically switches focus to any object held up to the lens. Overall, if you're looking for a lightweight video camera that won't break the bank, this one's hard to beat. Large 24.2 MP APS-C XMER CMOS sensor and fast Bions X processor. 4K movie oversampled from 6KW slash full pixel readout, no pixel binning. Product showcase setting transitions focus from face to object. Background defocus button instantly toggles between defocus effect on off. Easy live streaming with single USB cable and no extra hardware slash software. Number 5. Canon EOS RP. While crop sensor cameras offer beginners the best balance of price and performance, full-frame cameras generally perform better in low light, making getting a nice blurred background in your photos easier. While these advantages may be lost on you until you've gotten a handle on the basics, the entry-level Canon EOS RP is a good option for beginners who are set on jumping right into full-frame or know they'll need the extra low-light advantage. The RP is relatively portable compared to other full-frame options, and its simple button layout is designed to be as accessible as possible to newcomers. However, more advanced manual shooters might find the relative lack of control dials limiting. Still, it's comfortable to shoot with and includes a large viewfinder and a fully articulated touchscreen. While it can take high-resolution photos with less noise and low light, it lags behind many of our APS-C picks in battery life, burst rate, and dynamic range. Only consider it if you need that added low-light performance or already have some full-frame lenses.